In this clip, we're going to look at the process of learning kata. I know that many people start with the uh, teach teaching form. In our class, we're starting differently. We're starting with the applications. So we're going to go through the process of learning kata from A to Z. So we're starting from the learning uh, a form through uh, playing with it. So we're doing application first and then doing the form. So when the students are coming in for the first lesson, even with the white belts, we're starting with fill. So they're learning how to fill the kata and uh, we're breaking down the pieces of kata. So let's say for the uh, sake of teaching, we're going to do a pinang Sonoichi, uh, Pinan Nidan, or Heian Shodan, where you're starting from here, turning around, going in, punch. So we're going to start with uh, one person holds the hands, so that's the principles. We're going to step to the side, pull, hit, grab, pull, for example. Okay, so we're breaking it down to the chunks. So it's a first chunk, first chunk, second chunk. First, third chunk. So the, we're treating kata as a um, cascade of failures. So if I uh, defended myself, I broke in. I may be pulled too hard or maybe he leaned forward. I missed. So that's my first section, which is the failure. So I'm trying to use the second one as a, a solution to my problem. So problem is I didn't knock him out. He's still standing. He's going to be probably getting up, trying to do something. So I pull him. Take him in down. This was the failure, so a cutter tells me to bring it back. Kick him, hit him, pull him this way, hit him again, for example. Okay, so first thing we do is going to be practicing with the partner. Okay, the move, move by move. That's our first section before we're learning the kata form, the pattern we do partner work. The second stage is the learning of the pattern. So we're doing that in three ways. For the beginners, we're doing over elongated stances where everything is over exaggerated. So the students learn the movement of the hips where the power is transferred. So from here I'm pulling stepping in, stepping over, and so on. So they working on the placement, on the power development, moving the hips in space, and originate an end of the movement. Um, in that way that everything is reversed, uh, the students know what they're doing. They don't have to remember uh, patterns in air. They already know what's going on and they feel how they're meant to move. So they don't try to later imagine the applications. They already know what they're doing. Okay, we're doing the elongated stances as well for the uh, aesthetics. Then the second stage of the form is shortening it to more natural stances. So instead of going very long, we're going more natural. because we work with the power transfer from the long one. I know how my hips going. I know that my body drops in, so I can do the same with a shorter form. The third one is uh, completely freely done. So from here, I'm starting to uh, give the 45 degrees angles. So instead of going 90 degrees, I would go here, boom, here, hop. So it's getting more natural as our opponent is here. I'm coming in here, coming in here. That applies to all the katas. So I'm using the body mechanics, but in a very, very natural way, where I will be going here, boom, pull, hop, boom. Right, with a step in, boom. So this is the third process. Then we're going to a learning a drill. As we're going into the drill, it's not only myself uh, doing stuff, but my partner is doing uh, 
stuff as well. So he's learning how to counter my stuff. So if I pull him here, I step in here, he moved away. So I'm trying to pull him this way. He's going to spin out. That gives me a chance to get here. From here, he's going to grab my hand. He's trying to spin again away. And then we can go to the next motions. So we're working together. When I do something, he's in a compliant way at the moment. Going to be trying to stop me from doing that. And I'm going from the move to move this way, control and so on. So both myself practicing the form and my partner practicing escapes from the hold or whatever it might be. Okay? The last section for us, it is to do a kata play. So we're gonna work uh, freely with the partner. We're starting first with a compliant partner, then it is uh, putting gloves on non-compliant and the third one is with a fully resisting uh, partner. So I'm gonna show you now the uh, compliant one. So we're gonna work on it that he's gonna try to grab me, I'm gonna try to re respond with a kata. We're gonna try for the first one, so it can be either from here, so he's going, I'm going to side, I'm striking, right? But from here, he does whatever he can and I need to fit the kata. It doesn't matter if it's the first chunk, second chunk, first, whatever starts, right? So again, so here, and now we're just going, there you go, he goes in, and I'm using the kata without resistance. So we play together, uh, if I grab him, he's gonna do something as well, here, follow, and then we, I'm trying to use the kata as well. Yeah. And we play in this way. Then we can increase uh, the difficulty of it. We put the gloves. So summarizing everything, we're starting from learning the applications, moving on to three ways for a form only without the partner, going into the flow drill, where both partners working together. One is applying the kata, the other one applies the fences and play, so kata sparring, where we can do um, compliant, non-compliant and aggressive partner with gloves, without gloves. And one more uh, component of it is we often do the flow drill with a pads. So everything will be done with a partner. We're using impact training so we can train as well um, some impact and joint logs and stuff like that, right? We're also looking at the kata in three ways. So we've got the, can it be a strike, can it be a joint lock, can it be a um, of balancing or throw. I'm Les Bubka, hope you enjoyed this one and see you on the next one.